But first, it'd be hard to start the show any other way than to not discuss what happened yesterday in Minneapolis between the Dallas Cowboys and the, at the time, 8-1 and one Minnesota Vikings who were riding a seven-game win streak. Now, for clarification, those of you watching uh, the, the stream, you, you guys may be noticing that I'm wearing a Cowboys jersey. I'll obviously uh, let you know whose jersey that is. Once again, just to clarify, I am not a Dallas Cowboys fan turned in that card about two years ago for reasons that I've explained in previous shows. Don't really want to get into it today. But I'll tell you something. You know, there was a lot of talk coming in this game about Dak Prescott, Kirk Cousins, you know, two quarterbacks that no one really deems superstar worthy, and for good reason. Two quarterbacks that both have only one win in the postseason. Two quarterbacks who have almost identical numbers. So there was a debate last week, you know, with Kirk Cousins playing as well as he has this season. Vikings on a seven-game winning streak, being the number one seed in the NFC, leading the NFC North by a mile over the Detroit Lions and the Green Bay Packers, right? It was a debate. But somebody had to step in and remind the world who they are. Say it with me. You know his name. Rain. Dakota. Prescott. And Rain is not spelled... R-A-Y-N-E. Uh-uh. It's spelled R-E-I-G-N. Because he reigned over the Minnesota Vikings in Minneapolis. Dak Prescott yesterday with the whole NFL world saying, oh, yeah, one analyst said this is a career crossroads for Dak Prescott, as if these two games are going to define his career. But anyways, Dak Prescott against one of the top defenses in the NFL. Against an 8-1 and team on the road coming off of a loss to the now 4-7 and seven Green Bay Packers. Dak Prescott, 22 for 25. That's an 88% completion percentage. That's pretty good. Two touchdowns, which should have been three if Dalton Schultz had caught one. No turnovers. A passer rating of 139. You ready for this? QBR. A QBR, for those of you that don't know, it's just like grading a test. It's 0 to 100. 0 to 100. Dak Prescott's QBR was a 93. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, Rain Dakota Prescott had to come into U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and make an example of those 8-1, and now 8-2, Minnesota Vikings. And he, he said, in the words of the great Hall of Jay-Z, allow me to reintroduce myself. I don't want to ever hear again Who's better? Is it Dak or is it Kirk Cousins? Who's better? <sighs> well, Dak is now 5-1 and one versus Kirk Cousins and has outplayed him in all six games. The one loss was in 2019. Check the numbers. Dak vastly outplayed Kirk on a Sunday night game in Dallas, Texas. Go check that game. Dak Prescott is now 19-24 and 24 versus teams with a winning record. You're like, Bryson, that's, that's five games under 500. That, that's not that great. Well, take Mahomes, take Brady out of the picture. Just about every good quarterback that we deem good in the NFL has a losing record versus teams with a losing record. Or, I'm sorry, with a winning record. Dak's record, though, is 19-24. You know what Kirk Cousins' record is now? 10-41. and 41. <clears throat> Oh. That is despite, in this game, having the superior running back, which Kevin O'Connell, my man, the guy I picked before the season to be coach of the year, the guy who I think has done a remarkable job with the Vikings this season. Why did you get away from Dalvin Cook? He was averaging like five, six yards a carry. And you know Dallas's weakness of their defense. They can't stop the run. Like that's, if there's one thing other than penalties that's going to get the Cowboys beat in the playoffs, it's not being able to stop the run. It's not being able to get off the field. It's these teams putting together these six, seven, eight-minute long drives. That's what Green Bay did very successful last week. That's what the Bears did for a while very successfully in Dallas about three weeks ago. And the Vikings, for whatever reason, despite having a top 10 running back in football, just abandoned them. By the way, Alexander Madison, you guys know I really like him. He's kind of a bruiser type running back, really good number two back. What do you get, two carries? So the game plan for Minnesota didn't make a whole lot of sense from the beginning. 
It felt like as if they were trying to make a statement about, you know, it's like as if Kevin O'Connell bought into the the Kirk Cousins Dak type showdown and wanted, hey, Kirk, match, match Dak throw for throw, which first of all, he's not capable of doing. And second of all, doesn't help you offensively even if you try. Given what your strength is and given what Dallas' defense's weakness is. For the Cowboys, though, that was one of the bigger statement wins that I've seen this NFL season. You go on the road to Minnesota, 8-1. and 8-1 and one Vikings now. You can sit back and say, and I won't, I, listen, I, I won't necessarily push back on you because you guys know I really liked Minnesota coming into this year, and I still like them. I still think, well, I know they're going to win the NFC North because they've got like a four-game lead in that division. It's over there. I still think they're going to win a playoff game. I really do. I think they're talented enough to do so. But the Minnesota Vikings are 8-2, and two, yet somehow they have a negative point differential. That's because their eight wins are by the skin of their teeth. Or at least seven of their eight wins are by the skin of their teeth. Their losses have been <laughs> beatdowns. Philadelphia, what they did, did to them on a Monday night in week two, and what the Cowboys did to them yesterday, 40-2-3. And I have to give props where it's due. Um, Micah Parsons obviously had a rough game last week. I was hard on him. I said, listen, you are a top 10 player in the National Football League. You are arguably the front runner for Defensive Player of the Year. Up there with, you know, guys like Matthew Judon and, and guys like that who, who made a big statement this season. But Micah Parsons is not just in that discussion. He's probably leading that discussion. Had a bad game against the Packers last week. This week, from the get-go, was all over Kirk Cousins. Yes, he had the two sacks. He had the strip sack early, which really kind of set the tone for the game. But after that... 10 pressures, was constantly in the backfield making life hard on Kirk Cousins. As great as Micah Parsons was, though, yesterday, and he was great. I mean, he was he was what we expect from Micah Parsons. I don't think he was the best Cowboys defensive player. I really don't. That title yesterday belonged to Trayvon Diggs. It did. And Trayvon Diggs, the guy who was really hard on last season. I said, why on earth is a guy with, what is, how many finished with 11 interceptions, 12 interceptions, which was a Cowboy record for a single season? How does a guy get double-digit picks and yet teams keep throwing at him? Well, it's because he is, I called him Kenny Rogers. He's the gambler. Right? It's, it's boom or bust. It's pick six or give up a touchdown the other way. His improvement, and I said this, you check the tape, I said this back in week one, week two. His improvement as a pure cover corner from year two to year three is astronomical. It's incredible. And that's there's a reason why quarterbacks have stopped throwing his way. Because he is way more disciplined. He's learned the position more. You got to remember, he entered Alabama as a wide receiver, just like his brother, you know, superstar receiver Stephon Diggs. Trayvon Diggs was the receiver, but Nick Saban's like, okay, I don't think you're one of the best guys in our team, but or, or, or one of the best receivers on our team, but I want to get you on the field. You're a heck of a playmaker. You're athletic. You're fast. You got good hands. Let's put you at corner. And he's still kind of learning the position. The strides he's made from last year to this year are remarkable. Trayvon Diggs just held maybe the best receiver in the National Football League, a guy you know I have the highest regard for, Justin Jefferson. You know what Justin Jefferson did, did, did yesterday? He had three catches for 33 yards. That's what Trayvon Diggs did to Justin Jefferson. So defensively, and Micah was Micah. You know, he's a top 10 player in the National Football League. Trayvon Diggs was the best Cowboys defensive player yesterday. He was remarkable. The best unit on the field for both teams was the Cowboys defensive line. Seven sacks on Kirk Cousins. Parsons got two. Uh, D. Law got in the backfield. Uh, what's his name? Dante Fowler got a sack. I think Dorrance Armstrong got a sack. I mean, they were all over him yesterday. But a statement was made, ladies and gentlemen, by Rain Dakota Prescott. 88% completion. Nearly 300. Two touchdowns, what should have been three to Dalton Schultz. A QBR a 93. Better stop doubting this, man. Better stop doubting this, man. Come back to bite you every single time.
Not to mention, I think the Cowboys coaching staff is realizing. I think maybe Jerry Jones is realizing. Tony Pollard's the number one back. I love you, Zeke. Zeke is, God bless him, he's banged up again. He had a big knee brace on yesterday after missing the last two games. And he had two touchdowns to his credit. And I'm not saying they should take Zeke out of the rotation. He is still a very capable running back in the National Football League, especially down in, in the red zone where you saw he had two touchdowns yesterday afternoon. How I, I ask, how does a guy in Tony Pollard, who's leading the NFL in yards per carry, which that's a big stat, right? But also, you look at Tony Pollard, you're like, what, he's 5'9", five, 5'10"? Five, he, he's fast, but he's, he's not a guy who's going to run you over. Well, maybe he's not going to run you over, but he's not afraid of contact. You know I know that? First in the NFL in yards after contact. In about, I think it was three yards per carry after contact is Tony Pollard that leads the NFL. He is clearly the number one guy in the backfield in Dallas now. With all due respect to Zeke. But just, just as an example, both had 15 carries. The difference is Zeke averaged 2.8 yards a carry. Tony Pollard averaged 5.3. Like, I don't know what more he needs to show you at this point to prove that he's he's the number one back in Dallas. And by the way, at this point, incredibly, Dak Prescott may have found his number one receiver. It's also Tony Pollard. Now, there's a shot Odell ends up in Dallas. We know that he's going to meet with the Cowboys after Thanksgiving. It's funny, the, the Thanksgiving showdown between the Cowboys and the Giants, it looks like it's going to be the battle for Odell because of those, those are reportedly the two finalists to go get him. But... Odell, honestly, and I still think Odell's capable of being a number one receiver in the NFL. I really do. Dak's finally found a number one guy. It's Tony Pollard. It's not CeeDee Lamb. No, I haven't been that high on CeeDee Lamb this season. Who by which, but I will give credit where credit's due. Phenomenal catch on the sideline that set up a 60 yard field goal by Brett Maher, who that sequence where he hits the 60 yarder and they go back and review the CD lamb catch after Dallas already called timeout beforehand made no sense to me. And if that was an ever, I know this is a basketball term, but if that, this was ever a ball, don't lie moment, he barely squeaks in the first field goal, which got called back because the res, the refs for whatever reason, want to review the CD lamb play way after it happened. And then the second field goal, what does Brett Maher do right down Broadway? Ball don't lie. Sometimes it's your day. And it was the Dallas Cowboys day yesterday. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube. Be sure to click that big red subscribe button and go check out the other clips and full shows of Carving It Up Live. Have a blessed day.